yesterday we talked about what a transversal was, and we said that it was a line that did what? is the corresponding angles postulate. And it says that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of corresponding angles is congruent. Okay? So I've got them even color-coded here. You can see that my, my 1 and 5 are corresponding. If these lines are parallel, like these are, then those angles are going to be congruent to each other. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. And then all my other corresponding ones are as well. Angle 2 is, correspond is congruent to angle 6 because they're corresponding. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 8. They're corresponding. And angle 4 is congruent to angle 7. So all the corresponding angles are congruent with each other. And that's the corresponding angles postulate. Now, in this next example, it says in the figure, angle 5 equals 72 degrees. And it wants us to find the measure of each of the other angles. Okay, so I need to find the measure of angle 1, the measure of angle 2, the measure of angle 3, the measure of angle 4. You gave us 5, right? The measure of angle 6, the measure of angle 7, and the measure of angle 8. Okay, and it may or may not ask you to justify it with a reason. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and justify it because there's got to be a reason why we know what we do. So if angle 5 is 72 degrees, what else could we find? Okay, so angle 1 is going to be 72, and how do we know that? It's corresponding with 5, right? So that's the corresponding angle to postulate that would allow us to state that. Okay, so angle 1 is 72. What else did we find? Angle what? Our vertical angles, right? So they're equal to each other. Okay, so angle 8 is 72 degrees. That's by the vertical angles theorem. Okay. Okay, angle 4 is 72 for the same reason, right? Because it's vertical with 1, right? So that's the vertical angles here. Okay. Alright, now. What else could I find? Angle 6 is what? 78? Not 108. Why? Because what's its relationship here? They're a linear pair. And if you have a linear pair, they are... Supplementary. I know that's what you meant. <laughs> okay, so when you have a linear pair, you know that they're supplementary. That's the supplement theorem, right? If you have a linear pair, they're supplementary. So to get angle 6, I'm going to have to do 180 minus 72, which is 108. And that's the supplement theorem. Okay, and then 7 is vertical with 6, so it's going to be 108 also. Okay. What about uh, three? Can we find three or two? Okay, both of them we could do corresponding, couldn't we? Um, so angle two is going to be 108. It's corresponding with six, right? So it is 108. And then three is either vertical with two or corresponding with what? Seven. Okay. So, which one do you prefer, the vertical angle or the corresponding? Vertical? It doesn't really matter. Okay, so knowing just one of those angles, I was able to find all eight of them. Now, that postulate told us that our corresponding angles are congruent. But we notice we have some other congruencies as well. What do we notice about our alternate interior angles? 
They're congruent, aren't they? Okay. What about my alternate exterior angles? They're congruent. What about my consecutive interior angles? They're supplementary. They equal 180 together, don't they? Okay. So with that, we have these other theorems that we could state. And this is a, a theorem here. I forgot to put theorem. But it's the alternate interior angles theorem. It says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. Okay? So my alternate interior angle, angle 3, is congruent to angle 5. And angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. And that's by the alternate interior angles theorem. The next one is the consecutive interior angles theorem. And it says that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So my consecutive interior angle, one pair is four and five. So the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five equals 180 degrees. And likewise, the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle six is 180 degrees. And then lastly, we've got the alternate exterior angle theorem, okay? And we noticed that those were congruent in that problem up there. So if the lines are parallel, then my alternate exterior angles are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle eight, and angle two is congruent to angle seven, and that's by the alternate exterior angle sphere. So if you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, we get some congruencies. What kind of angles are congruent? What was the first one? What kind of angles are congruent? Corresponding angles are congruent. What else? Interior angles are congruent and all the exterior angles are congruent. What's the relationship for the consecutive interior angles? They're supplementary. Together they equal 180. You need to know that. Okay? You know all four of those things. Okay, you know it. Alright. Now, back by popular demand. We have this little proof here. Okay. Now, what I'm actually doing is proving the next theorem. And the reason I'm showing you the proof of this is because we didn't do a lot of perpendicular, parallel, right angle type stuff in the last chapter. And it'll be coming up, okay? You won't have a lot of proofs today. I don't know. Okay, one or two. I don't know We will later on in the chapter. Uh, but anyway, I want to go over this proof with you, and I want to show you kind of how you use some of this stuff. All right. So we are given that um, B is parallel to Q. So we know that those two are parallel to each other. We're also told that T is perpendicular to P. And we're trying to prove that T is perpendicular to Q. Okay. Now, if you know that two lines are perpendicular, what do they create? A right angle or four right angles, however you want to look at it, okay? And, and in order to prove you have perpendicular lines, you have to establish that you have a right angle. Okay, so you can use that in that definition in two ways. All right, so if I take this second part of the given, T is perpendicular to P. If I know that T and P are perpendicular, what can I say about angle one? Okay, yes, and it's right angle. It's a right angle, and because it's a right angle, it measures 90 degrees, right? Okay. We're also told that P and Q are parallel. And if P and Q are parallel, what's true about one and two? They're congruent because they're corresponding, right? And so if this is not if one is 90 degrees and one and two are congruent, then what's two going to equal? 90 degrees. And if it equals 90 degrees, what does it create? It creates a right angle, and if there's a right angle, you have perpendicular lines, okay? All right, so how would you write that down? Let's talk about that. Okay, we all know how to write the given, right? P is parallel to Q, and T is perpendicular to P. That's given to me. All right. So, again, we took the second part of the given here, and we said T is perpendicular to P. That means that angle 1 is a right angle. And I get that by the definition of perpendicular. Okay. So, if angle 1 is a right angle, what does that tell me about it? It's equal 90 degrees, right? And that is by definition of a right angle. Okay, now I'm going to go to the second part of the given. Okay, P is parallel to Q. Since P and Q are parallel, what do we say was true about 1 and 2? 
not, not parallel, they're congruent, right? So angle one is congruent to angle two, and that they are corresponding, so it's the corresponding angle postulate. Now I gotta somehow show that two is 90, right? And that it's a right angle. So I gotta go from a congruent statement into an equality statement, because I'm gonna have to do some substitution, okay? So I'm going to make this the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two. And that is by um, yeah, definition of congruent angles. Okay, so if one and two are equal and one is equal to 90, what can I say about two? Two is equal to 90, so measure of angle two is equal to 90, that's substitution. And if two equals 90 degrees, what does that say about angle two? It's a right angle. That's by the definition of a right angle. And if two is a right angle, what does that tell me about the relationship for T and Q? They are perpendicular. If they create a right angle, then they're perpendicular. So I can say T is perpendicular to, to Q by the definition of perpendicular lines. Okay, now I'm not going to make you reciprocate this, but there could be parts of it that you need to know the order in which things have to happen that you might have to use on a proof later on, okay? And really what we did here is we proved this next theorem, okay, which is called the perpendicular transversal theorem. And basically says, it says that if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it's perpendicular to the other, okay? So if L is perpendicular to M, and M is parallel to N, then L is perpendicular to N. So if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it's perpendicular to the other. Now, this one has a nice name called the perpendicular transversal theorem, right? That's awesome. That's going to be right out, correct? Right? But you have to know what that name says. You have to know what that theorem says if you're going to use the name. And we, some of us found that out on our test Monday because we have the definition of subsequent angles, we have the supplement theorem, and we have the congruent supplement theorem. Are all those the same thing? So they're three different things, right? They do three different things for us. So if you're going to use the name of a theorem, which is nice and handy, you've got to know what the theorem says, okay? All right. Now, on the next one, I want you to put a little star by this right here, okay? This is going to be on your test. It's going to be on the probably the EOI. It's, it's using an auxiliary line. Okay, and an auxiliary line is a line or a line segment added to a given figure to help in proving a result. Okay, and so what that does is it allows you to add something to the picture. It doesn't necessarily change the picture. It just kind of enhances it. Like it allows you to add another parallel line or another perpendicular line. Okay, it doesn't change anything. It just helps you. And the reason it's helpful is because we're trying to find, in this problem, the measure of angle GHI. We have a pair of parallel lines, but we don't have a transversal, do we? We have a ray that goes from here to here that intersects one of the parallel lines, and we have a ray that goes from the middle through the other one, okay? But you don't truly have a transversal, so we don't have any alternate interior or alternate exterior. We don't have any of that. So what you can do is you can add a third parallel line that goes through the vertex at that angle. Okay. So we've got a third parallel line now. And so what that does is it allows, it, it splits that angle GHI into two parts. Now they're not equal parts necessarily, but they're, it splits it into two parts. And now I can find both parts and then add those parts together. Now what you might want to do is cover up the bottom parallel line and just look at the top two and the transversal that's created. Because if I look at those top two parallel lines and my transversal, GH, then what, what do I have here? What can I do to find this little missing part that I need? These are equal, why? This is 40 and so you're telling me that this is gonna be 40? Why is that? What kind of angles are those? Alternate interior angles, right? So we know that those two are equal. Okay, now I want you to cover up the top parallel line and look at the bottom two. I notice that I have this 73 angle. Does it have a relationship with the other part? What is it? 
They're all tier also, so it, if this is 70, this is going to be 70. And so the measure of my angle GHI is going to be 40 plus 70, which is 110 degrees. Now, that's not to say that if you get another problem like this or similar to it, then you don't just see the two angles and add them together. Because that may not be the relationship. Okay, I'm going to show you another scenario real quick. Okay, I'm going to draw another parallel line here. Okay. And let's say that this time I give you that. Okay? Again, if you cover up the bottom parallel line, we still have our alternate interior angle relationship with the 40 degrees, so it's going to be 40, right? But look at the bottom two parallel lines, okay? Cut by this transversal. This is 110 degrees. Does it have a relationship with this angle right there? They're supplementary because they are what kind of angles? What's it called? Consecutive interior, right? And when the lines are parallel, your consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So if this is 110, then this is going to be 70, okay? And so you have to look at the relationship of the angles before you just make a decision on what you do. All right, one last problem. It says, if the measure of angle 1 is 3x plus 40, the measure of angle 2 is 2 times the quantity y minus 10, and 3 is 2x plus 7. Okay, now, we have two pairs of parallel lines and we have two different transversals. Sometimes you don't need all of that. So it might be to your benefit to cover up the parts you don't need. And I know that two of my angles have an x and one of my angles has a y. I want to try to find out what I can in the easiest way as possible. So I'm going to cover up the left side here. And I'm going to look at these two angles that are in, uh, expressed in terms of x. Do they have a relationship? What are they? They're corresponding. So if they're corresponding, they are equal to each other. So I'm going to set 3x plus 40 equal to 2x plus 70. And I'm going to solve it. And I end up with x is 30. All right. Now, I may have to go back and plug that in here in a minute. Because now I need to find this y. And if I cover up the bottom line like this, does this angle 2 have a relationship with anything? It has a relationship with 1. What's a relationship? They're, they're alternate exterior, so they are congruent to each other. But I need to plug my 30 in here for x, don't I? If I plug 30 in here, I end up with 90 plus 40. It ends up being 130, correct? And so then these two are being equal to each other. So I'm going to do 2 times the quantity y minus 10 equals 130. So I end up with 2y minus um, 20 equals 130. Add 20 to both sides. And then divide both sides by 2. And y is 75. Isn't that fun? That's my favorite part. I love looking for the missing angles or segments. Yes. What all angles are congruent? Good question. If lines are cut, two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, what's congruent? Alternate interior, alternate exterior, and one more, corresponding. And then, what's the relationship for the consecutive interior? Okay, you gotta know all four of those things. And then the other theorem we learned was that if two parallel lines uh, if one, two parallel lines is, wait, wait, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, and the line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, what's its relationship to the other one? It's also per no, perpendicular. We're talking about the line. Oh. Okay, the line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines. It's perpendicular to the other. Okay? All right. Your assignment's on page 183. <laughs>